Hello and welcome back to the Wealth of Nations study guide. Today we're looking at chapter 4, the origin and the use of money. Everybody has to exchange to live because no one produces everything they need themselves. Smith now turns his attention to money, which will occupy much of the rest of the Wealth of Nations. He has already discussed how all people have a natural desire to barter and trade, but there are limits to how useful bartering goods can be. A baker might want to exchange his bread for meat, but if the butcher already has enough bread, he doesn't need any more. And how can people decide how much of one item another thing is worth? Societies therefore need some form of currency. Smith tells us that different societies have used various goods as currencies in the past. He gives us examples, salt in Abyssinia, seashells in India, dried tobacco in the American South, and salted cod in New England. These all come with problems though. Often they are perishable goods, things which can go off or be destroyed over time. They're often large bulky items. For example, in ancient Ireland, people used cows as currency. And it can be difficult to divide them up. If you're using cows as currency and you want to buy some salt, then every time you buy salt, you have to buy an entire cow's worth. Metal especially precious metals such as silver or gold, are ideal for currency. They don't decay over time. Iron will rust, but gold does not rust. And they can be easily divided into smaller units. Their usefulness is increased by making them into coins. These can be of a uniform weight and quality, and people can trust in them. In the last part of chapter 4, Smith talks about how we find the relative exchangeable value of goods. He says there are two kinds of value, the value in use and the value in exchange. Value in use is how useful an item is. That's quite an easy one to understand. While value in exchange is the purchasing power the item has, what you can buy with it. It's interesting to note that things which have a great deal of usefulness often have a very low value in exchange. I'm writing this now using a pen and paper. It's very useful for me. I can change around what I'm writing. I can hold it in front of me when I read out the audio track that you're listening to now. But they're very cheap. They don't have much value. Things which are expensive or are very good for exchange, however, often don't have much practical use. The obvious example is diamonds and water. Water is about the most useful thing there is. We need it to be alive but it has very little exchange value and it's too big and bulky to carry around. Diamonds, however, are excellent as a form of currency, but they have no practical value. Smith asks three questions to determine the value of an item. And these questions are just as relevant today as they were when he wrote the book. One, what is the practical value of the item? Two, how is the price determined? And three, Under what circumstances will the price change? We'll be looking at these questions in future chapters, but anybody who's investing in Bitcoin or NFTs or any kind of crypto would be well advised to think about these questions and listen carefully to what Adam Smith has to say next.